Ah, oh, friend. My expression wasn't much better than yours when I first saw this. Okay, but like, how did you just so happen to find Robin's dead body? Like, that is a very important question, Aventurine. Your eyes aren't deceiving you. It's her. The famous singer, Robin. Yeah, like... How? <laughs> Well, first of all, can I just say that this had nothing to do with me? I'm just an unlucky bystander here. The family can testify for me. If you don't believe me, just ask anyone in the Bloodhound family. They hate me, and they hate the IPC, so they'd never lie. Well, I mean, to be fair, if they hated you, then they'd be happy to throw you under the bus. This is not where the crime happened. What I showed you was a memory. The most basic light cone manifesting tech. Authorized by the Garden of Recollection and owned by the IPC. Okay, sure, that at least explains why she turned into bubbles. Did you really think the Galaxy Rangers were outsiders this whole time? Panicone has made a solemn commitment to protect the safety of anyone inside a family dream. Any person in distress will be forcibly awakened and safely returned to reality. What gives them the confidence to make such conclusive statements? Because behind this promise is the harmony. The family's Dreamweavers link up their minds together to construct an unbreakable defensive line. Breaking through this line of defense to create death in the dreamscape. <laughs> Not even a memo keeper could do that without the family's permission. Who could have done it, friend? The only one is her. The girl who calls herself a Galaxy Ranger. An imposter. An unsought guest. An emanator who hides her true identity. Ifrit's death was a foregone conclusion. And Robin? Her misfortune was staring right at her. Who will be the next to die? Well then I just can't trust anybody. Gosh, I, I really just gotta put all my walls up. It's fine. Listen to your gut. Building trust always takes time, and I'm willing to wait. I just hope you realize that wherever that legacy is concerned, covert plans are already underway throughout Panicone. Everyone's got their own agenda. Careful you don't get stuck on the wrong side. <laughs> if I were you, I'd keep my distance from Acheron. After all, any schemes out in the open are always going to be better than a monster in the shadows, right? In other words, better be stabbed in the chest than stabbed in the back. <laughs> you at least want to see it coming. Who's to say there isn't an even deeper conspiracy lurking beneath the surface? Memo Keeper, I think our little deal is finished. Aventurine is telling the truth. This memory is a real one, and there's no sign of any distortion grafting on. The IPC is not the Garden, and there are real limits to what they can actually do, but you know all this. Friend, let's not beat around the bush here. The thing is, I want to reach out personally to team up with the Astral Express. I told you I'm just not interested in scrambling for the legacy. I just came to Pentagoni for work. I'm here to retrieve some lost property for the IPC, if you catch my drift. I'm talking ownership of this frontier prison. Yeah, and I'm sure the family is really happy about that. This has all become a bad debt thanks to the cancer of all worlds. The IPC has tried sitting down for negotiations time and again, but the family wouldn't even take our calls. <laughs> Why would they? You have no idea how difficult these people are to deal with. 
Put it this way, they've hushed up the existence of death before, so they can definitely cover up any news about Robin's death. It'll just quietly float off like a bubble and pop. Nobody ever being the wiser. That's not fair, right? So then, friend, I need your help. <laughs> I'm kind of busy right now. I mean, yeah, I kind of am, but still. I have but only one goal. The family's front door is like a high wall, and to tear the whole thing down, I'll have to dig out a few chunks first. Once I find a weak point, the IPC will have plenty of means. Now we have our chance. So long as we can get to the truth behind her death, we can have justice for Robin. <laughs> While also gaining a valuable bargaining chip for bringing the family to the table. Truly a once in a blue moon opportunity. I've been investigating and making lots of friends all over Panacone precisely for this very moment. This tragic news would be extremely bad for the family. So they'll be doing everything they can to stop it leaking, especially to the IPC. But I trust that there are still a few factions that remain exceptions. And that's why I need you all. The reputation of the Astral Express precedes you. And the Harmony will give you the fairest of appraisals. You get to find out really what happened and seek justice. And I get to put it toward completing my mission for the IPC. It's what you call a win-win situation. Listen, we already associate with the IPC, okay? You remember who Herza works for? <laughs> we associate with her all of the time. Don't worry, just head back and talk things over with your companions. That navigator is really smart. She must understand the value of this deal. Look, here's my contact details. If you come to any conclusions, call me. Oh, and take this. A thorough investigation can always use a little more funding. Don't mention it. Well, more free money from adventuring. <laughs> so long, friend. I really am looking forward to uncovering the truth about death with everyone. Aventurine just sauntered off. He really doesn't mean to force it, but something still seems off. What now? What are your plans? Black Swan. What is she thinking? On the surface, this doesn't look like a bad deal for you. But Aventurine is a shrewd merchant whose scheme won't just be as simple as it appears to be. Oh, I'm sure. He doesn't know about Miss Firefly yet. But, judging by your reaction, he may have noticed something going on. And deliberately shifted topics to the truth of death. To try and pull you in line with his way of thinking. That's quick thinking and very sound logic. Aventurine is no fool, and working with him definitely has its dangers. <laughs> Can I just toss a die? Listen, that's a terrible idea. That is something I agree on. Anyway, be careful out there. There's more than one way to blaze a trail. In a dark forest beset by wolves, ensuring your own escape to safety should be your primary concern. As for the other questions... I'm not sure the two cases were committed by the same culprit, but that massive wound looked like its winged blade. We've all witnessed it in action before. Plus, it seems unlikely that there would be two lethal entities loose in the dreamscape. I mean, I really hope there isn't. One something unto death is enough death for me. Sorry, I can't answer that question. 
That ranger is shrouded in mystery. I'm afraid no one is capable of providing an answer. But without a doubt, she is the most special guest at this banquet. It's like a venturing said just then. It's best to keep your distance from her. Two victims appearing one after the other in a very short time span, in and of itself, that's very unusual. Two possibilities. The collapse of Panacone's dreamscape has started speeding up, making death extremely agitated and weakening the family's protections. Or, everything has been planned out and executed by someone. If someone has chosen these victims deliberately, first a smuggler, then a family celebrity, then this murderer's motives are worth thoroughly chewing over. It's all happened so quickly, I can only make conjecture. After leaving here, go have a chat with your companions. I hope you can clarify the source of this confusion. This way... This is where we part ways. All of this is like... A nightmare. Unfortunately, the remembrance doesn't lie. What we just saw is the reality that happened. And it won't fade from our minds just because we wake up. But follow your heart, and don't be afraid. We all walk through this world casting shadows of different lengths, and ultimately, all we leave behind are precious memories. Ah, hold on just a sec. What did you just do? There you go. A small parting gift. If one day you unfortunately fall into the deep waters of the memory zone, and there's no memo keeper to join you, hopefully it can guide you on my behalf. Okay. I also pay great attention to the ways of the world. Just think of this as an apology from me for hiding something from you. Well, thank you, I guess. Then... I have something private to take care of regarding that Galaxy Ranger. Let's leave things there, shall we? What fascinating memories will you bring for me next time we meet? I sincerely look forward to them. I mean, I thought you said you were gonna play bodyguard for me, but I guess since Aventurine left, it doesn't matter anymore. Aw, March is so worried. I'm sorry. Aw, Don Hong was even gonna come help look. Aw, uh, it's okay. You can stay there. Everything's fine. <laughs> well, it's like, everything's cool out here. Gosh, you guys are having a whole bunch of trouble in that dream, huh? Family rep. Is Himiko okay? So much has happened. I should take a moment to gather my thoughts and wait for everyone to arrive. Do you still dream, Hunter, of those slain by your hand?
<laughs> okay, we're going all in. <sighs> R.I.P. Duke Inferno. It appears the outcome has already been determined. We're still alive, as are you. We still have room to make a choice. Leave the music box behind, and then go. Choice. The bloody trail of the destruction leaves no room for hesitation. Yeah, I mean, he's the one who said, don't fear death, you know, walk straight into it. Death is part of destruction. The Taurus Fire Demon. Even if you sacrifice your life for that eon, you won't get special treatment. Ranger, you'll tread the narrow path of the hunt. You could never understand. We come from the fire and are born bathed in fire. We spread, burn, and destroy until all the kindling has burned out and we leave only ashes on the ground. Burning forms the entire life of a fire demon. From the beginning to the end. We are born to die just to put into practice a profile of another universal truth. All things are created for the destruction. Your companions don't seem to think so. They fight for your chance at survival. They have jobs to do. They were given their tasks, okay? They are my children, and just as I was. They are flames that have yet to burn my heart. They're still young. My flames are faint, and time is running out. Can you see the planet of festivities in the distance? I plan to bring purgatory with me there, and before that, I must surpass you. Why? Because on the path they have fallen. You have traveled farther than I have. Emanator. <sighs> you cannot hide your true identity. Draw that sword. For we shall indeed remain here, bound to fight a decisive battle to the death, for I choose this. Destruction is intense, but brief. To cravenly cling to life is to endure an endlessly prolonged existence. Even if the answer turns out to be your own destruction? What is important is not the answer. But that it exists, just as you exist. Everything exists to be destroyed. Emanators are no different. Just as even sweet dreams may be born of the void, the so-called impossible is merely something that is yet to happen. All right. I accept. You shall witness the most brilliant and intense fire in existence. May this flame illuminate the farthest reaches of your bottomless dream. A bottomless dream. <laughs> yes, that's right. But you've made one small mistake. This blade remains in its scabbard not out of pity or scorn. It's a personal secret that I don't want to disclose, but... Perhaps out of reciprocity.
I'll reveal the truth to you. The hunt is not the path I truly follow. May death be the end of your boundless dream, guiding you back to the waking world. I still see them in my dreams. Hold it. Your time hasn't come yet. My time. Sam, you were this close to dying. I've seen many clever disguises that can conceal appearances, but they can never cover up who a person really is. And you're no different. You had no desire to kill the Trailblazer. You only did what you did to drive me and the Memo Keeper away, but... Why? Well, I mean, to be fair, he literally did not acknowledge me, like, at all when we went on the scene. He was like, ah, oh, Memo Keeper, Ranger, and just ignored me straight up, so, yeah. Did destiny slave make you do it? You know, Elio. I thought this is just the kind of thing that'd get written into your script. My script has always been brief. Other than that, anything beyond that is unnecessary. He knows my nature. There is but a single destiny from which no one can escape. And until then, I hold the privilege of choice. However, you appear to be ignorant of this. So it's time for me to inquire. Who exactly are you? Not your enemy. Perhaps. That's not what I asked. I don't deserve your curiosity. Loners wandering the cosmos always have their secrets. Take me. I'm wanted by the IPC, so it's little wonder that I know something about the Stellaron Hunters. That's all. Maybe I can help. What reason would you have for doing that? I tend to forget things. Which is why, rather than memories, I'm accustomed to using my emotions to capture what I normally wouldn't otherwise. So... I know who is inside that cold armor. <gasps> How about it? Ready to take off that armor and sit down for a talk? It's not yet time. I don't need help, but I can give you a suggestion that would make things better for you and me. If your goal is the Watchmaker's legacy, then go look into the family. Not only are they covering up the existence of death, but they're burying the past and the truth about what happens inside the dreamscape. Already on it. And the Astral Express is no enemy of yours. I know that. I just never expected to hear you say it. What's next, then? The Trailblazer has been taken by Black Swan. Will you go look for her? No need for that. No harm in mentioning that Elio's only given me one instruction. Get all of the Astral Express to track down the Grand Legacy. I tried settling this in an easier and more direct way. But as you can see, here I am, confronting you. I failed. Can't ever go against the script. 
The so-called impossible is merely something that has yet to happen. That's it. Before we split, can I ask you one more thing? Is there anything else in your script about me? I'd like to know what kind of footnote I get to leave in that future foreseen by destiny. Unfortunately, not a thing came up. <laughs> I knew it. Hang on. I... Don't. Don't. What? Your first question was... Do you still have dreams about everyone who died because of you? I don't. Never have. I was born without the ability to dream. I live for this cold, harsh reality. For a little light and to burn, to keep on burning until I turn to ash. Okay, Sam, that's a little depressing. So, I really envy you. Is that so? Then you're already living in the waking world. We heard about Miss Firefly from Black Swan, but we never expected Miss Robin to... Oh, I'm sorry that I couldn't be with you then. Reality cruises on in serenity, while undercurrents bubble up from the dreamscape. Just like that memo keeper said. Stay strong, everyone. We can still do what we can for them. Starting with finding the murderer. Let's recap everything then. The trailblazer just reminded me of something. March, do you remember what that family rep who negotiated with us said? Uh, indeed we trust that the Nameless has nothing to do with this. And we also beg each of you to help assist the family in verifying the identity of the deceased. Uh, that's how it was put. In reference to Miss Firefly. Looking back, he seemed a little evasive at the time. And he also failed to mention anything about the earlier murder, too. And of course the family doesn't want to admit to anyone that one of their own people got done in. The family's planning on covering up all news about Miss Robin's death. If news gets out, Penacone's going to turn into a bloodbath. But the murder that followed closely after was obviously beyond their anticipation. The family had to try and turn things to their advantage by bringing in reinforcements from outside. The Charmony Festival is nearly here. They must be snowed under. It may also be that Miss Firefly's murder had so many witnesses that it couldn't be covered up. So they went with the flow and let more people on the scene to control the situation. After all, the nature of the two murders is fundamentally different. The family's first protective measure should be against malicious actors among the guests, such as that IPC envoy. Uh, they're, uh, they're bad-mouthing you again, Aventurian. I mean, for a good reason, but still. Indeed, he was particularly concerned about that Galaxy Ranger. Are we missing the forest for the trees here? I always felt that Aventurine's reasons for accusing Miss Acheron were highly subtle. Can we believe him? At this point, I'm afraid the only ones we can trust are ourselves. Trust no one but the train. Look, 
Let's try to gather intel first and then list all the possible outcomes we can. Then we go through them, eliminating contradictions one by one. The fewer facts remaining, the closer we are to the truth. I've still got this sense of foreboding. It's like we're stuck in a whirlpool, spinning around that legacy even after everything that's happened. Uh, this time we're playing the role of a real detective. But before we start, what are we going to say to the family and adventuring? As I see things, the family harbors no ill will towards the Astral Express. If they didn't trust the crew, they wouldn't have casually commissioned outsiders to investigate a case that's in all likelihood a scandal. Plus, this is the family's turf. Teaming up with them should make things easier for us in the future. As for that aventurine... Welt, I'd like to hear your thoughts. He's complex. He deliberately slow-played his hand during negotiations while running circles around us all the while. He appealed convincingly to both reason and emotion. It wasn't forced, but the intent was obvious. Still, it's good to have contacts among all this uncertainty. Adventurine showed his skills, and as far as our interests are aligned, he can become a reliable ally. We also need to keep a certain distance from the family. Never let them get too close. Teaming up with the IPC helps balance that out. If either side makes a move, we have the option to pull out. So you suggest accepting Aventurine's proposal to team up? Yes. It's risky, but we can only wait until both sides have played their cards before making any further judgments. I get why, but there's a whole lot of bad guys and girls around here, and I'm worried about getting stabbed in the back. She's been bullied a few times now, and I can't stand it anymore. No, I appreciate it, March. <laughs> it's cool, you can bully me whenever. <laughs> Record. Sorry. Uh, forget about it. Just let me keep an eye on him. If that doesn't work, we can just turn the tables and use him instead. Then could you please reply to Aventurine? Everyone, take this time to put together your thoughts. Will do. He gave me his number for this exact reason. Always open to pull for your game account. Well, <laughs> interesting little tagline there, Venturine. <laughs> How are you doing that? <laughs> How do you have access to my bank account, Venturine? <laughs> Thanks, boss. Oh, damn. Okay, 200 grand. Okay, see you around. Looks like Aventurine is happy with this outcome. Let's tell everyone about it. He's so happy that he gave me $200,000. Avengerine's goal is to try and recapture Penacony for IPC. To do this, he'll have to bring down the family in its entirety to create a big enough chance. The existence of death will be covered up by the family. So how does he plan on taking them down? It's got to be something important enough that everyone will notice. But it also can't be anything too out in the open. An attack on the hotel guests? Unlikely. Penacone's guests include quite a few bigwigs known throughout the whole cosmos. People who not even the IPC would dare take lightly. 
Aventurine is a shrewd merchant, and there's no way he doesn't know that. He's definitely going for the family, and it's just a matter of how. The Harmony is strong in Penacony, and almost impossible to take on head-to-head. -head. The fact that the IPC dispatched Venturine shows that they do not intend to simply play by the book here. Venturine has devoted considerable attention to her, but this Galaxy Ranger... We know hardly anything about her, and can't rush to any conclusions. Hmm, I was also considering this possibility. Especially because he respects you so much, and has sought you out before a few times. Perhaps he's also unsure of your intentions and is probing you. Listen, I don't know that he respects me. He just thinks I am somehow the most interesting one. I'm just speculating. In any case, we have to be careful when handling Aventurine. He's skilled at reading people and discerning the right moment to strike. Also, he's clearly a born gambler if he's willing to go all in to win. Aventurine said something that concerns me. He accused that Galaxy Ranger of killing Robin without any evidence whatsoever, but said nothing about her connection to that Memory Zone meme or why he was stalking you. It was a groundless accusation, which only serves to make him seem more suspicious. I mean, listen, he has been stalking a lot of people. <laughs> Maybe Adventurine's goal was never to gain our trust. Maybe he wanted to foster a feeling of enmity towards Acheron and make the situation more volatile. Two birds, one stone. However, I asked Don Hung back on the Express to confirm that story about the Annihilation Gang and the lost messages. It wasn't something that Adventurine made up out of thin air. You've met her many times now. What's your impression of Miss Acheron? Uh, well, I don't know I would say gentle. Uh, weird, I can't remember, huh? She's definitely powerful and mysterious. But strange, actually, I can't remember. Weird, funny that. Funny how I read text can't remember. That fits the stereotype of a Galaxy Ranger to a T. They're eccentric, unpredictable, and fond of being alone. No wonder she's a suspect. She's self-annihilating her memories out of my head. I hope it's not too soon to bring it up. But I feel like Miss Robin isn't actually dead but that she's still alive and well. Somewhere. But everything's just some horrible prank. That's okay, March. You can think that for as long as you want until the end of 2.3, okay? You can have that much time to feel however you need to feel. Because aren't we supposed to be inside a dream? How could someone die in a beautiful dreamscape like this. Shouldn't only good things happen here? Uh, whenever I see the Grand Theater, I just can't stop all these thoughts from flooding my head. Yeah, of course. At times like this, we're so lucky to have our crew. The family and the IPC. Everyone has their own plans going on. Everyone's still having a great time out there on the streets. Nobody knows what's happened. It's all so unreal. As if Firefly, Miss Robin, and us were all outsiders from another world. 
Aw, what a mess. I really want a nice cool drink of soda to help me calm down. Ah, <sighs> but then I'd be just like everyone else out on the streets. Looks like Adventurine doesn't need anything else. Let's turn our attention to the family's assignment for now. Himiko, what do you think? Among our current clues, the two murders that she witnessed are the most directly connected. I suggest starting here. One thing I'm curious about is, if a person dies in a dream, what happens to them in real life? Seeing as we're at the family's behest, why not pop back out to reality and verify Miss Firefly's situation back at the hotel? Perhaps we could also make a few inquiries about her while out there. How about we split off into two groups? There are still some things worth focusing on inside the dreamscape. I'll investigate those and we can link up again later. Worth focusing on? Oh. No problem. I'll leave it to you then. Huh? Aw, I thought I'd finally get to see Himeko and Mr. Yang go out on a mission together. Oh well. Take care then, Mr. Yang. <laughs> I will. Keep in touch. We're really just switching places. You kept watch out in the hotel before, and now you're gonna keep watch inside the Golden Hour. Hmm. Honored guest, uh, could you come out for a second? Oh. I'd be embarrassed too, getting stared at like that. <laughs> Acheron, please. Uh, forgive me. Uh, my name is Welt Yang. I'm one of the crew members on the Astral Express. I believe you've met my colleagues. Well. Is there something about my name? First, don't you want to know my name? I already do, Miss Acheron. You're a prominent figure in Panacone. What are they saying about me? Some claim that you're the real culprit behind these murders, that the Annihilation Gang's tragic fate at the banquet was a result of your blade, and that you're now attempting to unleash another bloodbath on Penicone. The Annihilation Gang? Ifrit of Everflame Mansion. Tragic fate. That duke turned his dying body to flames and sacrificed his life as a martyr. He was a determined and heroic path strider. Not even a villain should be disparaged like this. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not a tragic fate. He literally walked into it eyes open. And what's more, there were plenty of suspects invited. Do they really think that a blade is more dangerous than that black hole you're wielding? I mean... You're not wrong. Keen intuition. Not even the family managed to point out the truth behind this cane. So you must surely know, Miss Acheron, that peering into a black hole is not a wise move. As a potential threat, your knowledge of us has reached uncomfortable depths. Reveal your true identity and intentions. Otherwise, brace yourself for gravitational disintegration. Oh, damn. Well, okay. That shouldn't be necessary. But if it makes the nameless feel less defensive, I'll be happy to abide. Believe it or not, Galaxy Ranger, Acheron, those are the names I go by to this very day. My trip to Panacone is solely to fulfill an old, final request. I'm here for the Watchmaker's legacy. And that's it. I think I've been honest enough. 
Still unwilling to reveal your true identity? It's not that I don't want to. It's just that I can't. I've come so far, and I can't sum up all of that in just a few words. Everyone has their own unspeakable past. Secrets that they don't want to be revealed. And I won't be asking any more questions, such as why the Astral Express is roaming around the cosmos with a Stellaron on board. <sighs> is she okay? That memo keeper didn't do anything, right? She's fine. Let's just stick with the topic. Gaining my trust depends on how much you're willing to reveal. I've run around many different Panacone dreamscapes just to try and find that legacy. And during this period, I came into contact with quite a few guests. In the process, I gradually came to realize... The secret of Panacone... ...may be closely related to the Trailblaze. That's why I've come to ask for your help. I don't have enough proof yet, but I'd like to speculate something. The source of all tragedy lies within the family. If you could trust me, we could find the proof to support this claim together. Mr. Yang, I think you've come to the same conclusion, haven't you? Let's leave it at that. For now, I'll choose to believe that you bear no hostility. Share your findings with me and me alone. I don't want vague conjecture to interfere with other people's judgments before we find solid proof. Mm-hmm. By the way, would you like something to drink? Before we go, how about two cups of wake the heck up? No. Four cups. What are you talking about? Because the conversation coming up will last forever. But you're gonna need some damn strong coffee, sir. I've been watching her closely for a while now, and the first invitation was in the banquet hall of the hotel. She just sat in one corner, keeping silent, chugging down a couple cups of wake the heck up. I told her it's a pungent, bitter beverage, not the taste of sweet dreams, only for people allergic to soul glad. And she said, Really? But I don't taste any difference at all between them. The guest rooms are charmingly minimalist. An aesthetic you share, Miss Acheron. It's a cinch. This music box. The invitation received by the Annihilation Gang. There are latent memories that linger on it yet. You see, memories of you are not yours alone. They travel in other people, other things. I know much, and I can predict even more. With some help, the dead can be made to speak. The Annihilation Gang, that band of desperados who all disappeared after meeting you, what exactly happened to them? Well, let me reveal all. Gradation. 12. Dreamscape. 12. Father, I dedicate this to you. Well done, Dubra. Wherever they go, shall be met by annihilation. There it is. It's hazy, but it's Ifrit's voice. The other one is probably his progeny. This is the residual memory from when the invitation was first delivered. They were abruptly interrupted. Then, what happened next is... 
Okay, but like, you remember what happened the last time you tried to look at Acheron's memories, right? So, be a little hesitant. They sought refuge in the land of sleep. Merely wishing for undisturbed rest, away from the storms. Children of the flame, this marks your right of passage. She won't be necessary. I alone am enough. Shh. When have thou, on the path of destruction, feared death? The Everflame Mansion has set out on a journey. Those poor people, they have no idea what lies in wait ahead of them. Memory recovery is going well, but slowly. She'll be here soon, and time is short. There's nobody else here, so there's no need to be delicate. In fact, I think I'd better go all out. What happened? The memory after that is blank. How is that possible? This music box fell into Acheron's hands and she brought it to Panacone. That's a fact, and that's how it should have gone. But along the way, It's like it's been erased. Who's done this? Listen, I don't think self-annihilators have an easy time being recorded in history. Just saying. And I'm pretty sure that Akron is a self-annihilator. Who are you? Who are you? It's... No. Is this not a memory? Oh, a memo keeper. Do you serve the Garden of Recollection? Or the Cremators? My name is Constance. A pleasure to meet you. We were supposed to meet in Pentagoni and spend it. <laughs> Unforgettable time together. But that seems unrealistic. Dahlia's not welcome on the banquet store, and I don't need a coming-of-age ceremony. And you... I know what you're looking for. Want her secret? I can give it to you, and then... you can enjoy the banquet for me. I wish you... unforgettable. Memories. Oh. Hmm. A phone. Wanna listen in? 